now uh, just coming to few of the definitions so we should know once we start treatment what we uh, understand Radiation is in the urine albumin or is consecutive days. Then we call the child has gone into remission. That is, the child has improved and we can actually stop in case if on the steroid. What is a relapsing the urine albumin, which is three plus or four plus again for three consecutive days? Uh, who has been in the remission uh, previously remember one day or once in a while the child might develop a little bit of protein urea in the dipstick but until unless it is consecutive three days we do not call it as a relapse when the child has a relapse then we have to treat them just like how we have treated the relapse the one is called as a frequent relapse there is a less than two type uh, uh, two times relapse uh, you know, in the child who started monitoring in six months or less, uh, less than two relapses in uh, twelve calendar months. Whereas relapses where there is a two or more than two six months and three or more than three relapses which occurs in one calendar year. The frequent the child apart from steroids have to be started on medications like uh, cyclophosphamide, cyclosurin. Uh, and uh, uh, MMF that we have already discussed. Now there is something called the steroid dependence is uh, consecutive relapses which occur whenever we are on the tapering of the steroids or alternate of the steroids. That is when we are we have started the steroid treatment, the child improves, the protein urea comes down. But as soon as we go on the alternate day, or we are reducing the dose of the steroids, uh, or continue the steroids after discontinuation, we see that there is a relapse again. This is called as steroid dependence. Steroid when there is no remission at all, that is, there is no uh, protein persisting with the daily prednisolone therapy for more than four weeks. So, in spite of starting. A then it is called as a steroid resistance. Uh, these are the uh, children who are candidates for doing a renal biopsy and starting them on the alternative therapy as I have discussed before. Now coming to the outcomes. The outcomes uh, in a minimal change disease, usually 10% of the children after the first uh, uh, dosage, I mean, after the first therapy with the steroid, they go into remission and they never relapse. Whereas 60% they have an infrequent relapse. This uh, relapse can occur because of any precipitating features like uh, uh, intercurrent illness or uh, 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 using the uh, any stress which can occur. Uh, so these are infrequent relapses. Whereas 30% of the children, they develop frequent relapse or they develop a steroid dependency. Usually, the outcome of the minimal change disease is very good. 90% of the children, they remain in remission at puberty. And there's a very minimal risk of these children going in for the chronic renal failure. Whereas the other ones, uh, the prognosis for uh, the uh, FSGS, that is your focal segmental glomerular sclerosis or membranoproliferative glomerular sclerosis or membranous glomerular sclerosis or secondary uh, nephrotic syndrome is not so good. These are the children who are either steroid dependent or they are steroid resistant who require the other medications. These are the children who develop, who have a, a, a risk of developing an end-stage renal disease and these children might go on for dialysis or might require a re kidney transplant at a later stage. The last word is about the focal segmented glomerular sclerosis. Again, this is with your minimal change. That is the other um, uh, commonly uh, um, uh, um, uh, disease which is seen by the pediatricians. Again, it is a little bit more difficult to treat this condition as compared to the minimal change uh, uh, disease. They might require a high dose steroids. They might require either cyclophosphamide or cyclosurin to be used. But these children also going for remission might remain into the remission for a little longer period of time. 
these children who with the focal segmental glomerulosclerosis in case if they develop a, a global sclerosis then these are the children who go in for the end stage renal disease and might require a renal transplant all said and done the nephrotic syndrome three points to remember one we have to define nephrotic syndrome by looking at the proteins second the commonest cause of nephrotic syndrome is a minimal change disease and it has got a good prognosis only thing is the child has to be worked up very well we have to do the investigations to rule out the other infections and uh, treat them with the steroids and keep a close watch on the proteins and protein urea the third important aspect is to uh, identify the condition either at the beginning or at the later stage where the child does not respond or have a relapse with the treatment to look at the secondary causes or look at the other conditions like membrano proliferative disease or minimal uh, fsgs or iga nephropathy or uh, uh, your membranous glomerular nephritis the treatment uh, of the complications is equally important as the treatment of the uh, primary disease per se it is important to keep a watch and closely evaluate the child and do not ignore any of the conditions remember the child on steroids will not develop the fever but if they develop a tachycardia breathing difficulty sudden abdominal distension uh, uh, these are the children who should be very quickly evaluated for uh, any signs of infection and should be treated with the antibiotics as fast as possible so thank you very much uh, uh, for the patient hearing